Behind me is a very dirty Subaru. And that makes sense because Subarus are often very dirty. They're bought by people who want a vehicle that they can take from their home to the trail. And this 2024 Subaru Crosstrek, well, it can go a little further because this is a Crosstrek Wilderness. Now we first saw the Wilderness trim level in 2022 on the Outback. It was then followed by the Forester Wilderness, but the premise remains the same. Let's take a vehicle that can take you off-road and let it take you a little further, a little deeper into the wild. Now this is for sale on cargurus.com. You can buy the Wilderness today. You can also buy the Premium, the Limited, the Sport trims, and we have another video review that we filmed earlier in this year on that premium trim. And we're gonna have some comparisons with other Crosstrek models against some of their top competitors. But first, I wanna take a quick look around the exterior of the car, and then we'll get, take it for a drive. We'll see what it can do on-road and off-road. We'll look at the tech and we'll look at the cost effectiveness. But first, let's see what makes this Crosstrek Wilderness different from the others. First, there's the face. It's a little different on the Wilderness than it is on other Crosstreks. We have this matte black panel up on the roof that really helps reduce glare when you're out here in Southern Utah and the sun is shining like we are today. We also have a different grill design. We have this hexagonal shape design on the fog lights. These copper accents, you're gonna see those all over the place. Down the side though, this is where I think things start to get a little interesting. So because it's a wilderness, it has 9.3 inches of ground clearance instead of the regular 8.7 inches, which was already pretty impressive for the class. It sits on 17 inch Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires from the factory, all-terrain, not all season from the factory. And of course we have quite a bit of extra body cladding. Again, the Crosstrek name in those bronze accents. We've got the bronze accents up here. And this standard roof rack is a ladder style roof rack that's different than the one you get on other Crosstreks. This one can hold up to 700 pounds in static weight. That means you can throw a tent up there and you can actually get into the tent, maybe another person in the tent. You're not gonna have to worry about exceeding the weight limits on your crossbars. Moving to the back, we still have more body cladding. Again, the rear bumper and the front bumper are, they have a slightly different shape, slightly different design. That helps improve the approach and departure angles. And more badging. We've got Subaru Wilderness here. We've got one on the back. We've got plenty of them inside. And speaking of inside, I am roasting out here. So I wanna get in the car and let's take it for a drive. If you're in the market for a Subaru Crosstrek, the 2024 model gives you two different engine options. In the base trim and the premium trim, you get the base two liter four cylinder engine that we tested in Palm Springs earlier this year. I found it to be adequate, but a bit uninspiring. Now, in contrast, the Sport Limited and the Wilderness trims, they get a two and a half liter four cylinder engine. It makes more horsepower, 182 horsepower and more torque, 178 pound feet of torque. And admittedly, those aren't blistering numbers. And in my personal Subaru Forester, which makes very similar figures from a very similar engine, it feels a bit slow, but the Forester is a bigger car than the Crosstrek, so it feels a little bit better here. And because this is the Wilderness trim, we have the advantage of the Wilderness's shorter final drive ratio. Now in layman's terms, the final drive ratio dictates kind of how much accelerating power you get or how much uh, wheel torque you get at the expense of your top speed. And there are some other trade-offs as well. But in short, the Wilderness, because it has a shorter final drive ratio, it's a bit zippier off the line, and it means it's gonna be a little better at climbing, uh, but it will get a little worse fuel economy. That's the same as what you might find in the Outback Wilderness or the Forester Wilderness. Uh, I'm also noticing that the road noise, particularly at 65, what we're doing right now, 65 miles an hour, it's just a bit more than it is in uh, a cross track that has the longer 3.7 final drive ratio. And that's undoubtedly 
do not just to the higher RPMs that we're, we're living with here, but also this car is a little less aerodynamics. There's probably a little more wind noise and the tires on this are all-terrain tires, which obviously are gonna create a little more of a ruckus, particularly when you're really ripping down the highway. Now, some other things I'm noticing in the Crosstrek, we're not on that windy road before, but we just came down out of the mountains and it definitely leans a bit more than that two liter uh, Crosstrek Premium that we tested earlier this year. That's likely due to the longer springs, the higher ride height. Uh, it could also be due to some degree to those all-terrain tires. Um, and then the steering, I found it to be a little vague, but overall pretty, pretty good to, to experience in the premium trim. It feels a little more vague here. Again, probably exacerbated a bit by that extra body roll. Throttle, I mean, it's still a cross track. You know, it, it's not quite there right at tip in, but well, really, I mean, the power doesn't really feel like it's there ever, but you're not gonna buy this car to be racing around Willow Springs. As I actually said, nobody's buying a Crosstrek to take out to Willow Springs anyways. Unless you are. If you are, let us know in the comments. I wanna hear about that. I haven't heard from anybody that that is the case. So I'm really, I am gonna assume that my assumptions are correct, that people don't buy this as a race car. But let us know. In terms of the brakes, nobody behind us. They grab well, they're really predictable happy with the brakes overall it's a it's certainly a pleasant car to drive i think it's just it's a bit noisier than i would want on the highway drive and with the you know taller springs and the higher ride height it might be a, a bit wallowy if you're just driving on regular paved back roads but i suppose the benefit is that when you get off road that higher ride height those uh, squishier springs, that, that more supple suspension, it's really gonna pay dividends when it comes to handling, you know, rocks and dips and boulders and whatever else you come across when you leave the tarmac. One of the more controversial choices that Subaru made in redesigning the 2024 Crosstrek is that it dropped the manual transmission option. So all Crosstreks now, including this wilderness trim, they get a continuously variable transmission as standard and as the only choice. Now, a CVT, or continuously variable transmission, they have some vocal detractors for two primary reasons. They can drone a bit, particularly when you're accelerating up to higher speeds, and this Crosstrek does suffer from that. But the bigger issue, in my opinion, is the CVT's tendency to rubber band a little bit. So to kind of like hold a gear too long before shifting, particularly at lower speeds, like if you're in traffic, and it just results in a drive that's a bit jerkier than you would get in a traditional automatic transmission. Now there's some good news here because for the wilderness trim, Subaru has added a second pressure sensor to the CVT system. And that means that it's a little more responsive. It's a little better at eliminating that rubber banding effect. Again, the drone is, is still there, but it's a more pleasant CVT experience than you get in other cross-track trims. Frankly, it's more pleasant CVT than the one I'm dealing with in my personal Subaru Forester. Now, another benefit for the Crosstrek Wilderness is that it has a 3,500 pound towing rating, uh, excuse me, 3,500 pound towing rating, which is just about double what you get in any other Crosstrek. Now, the big thing here is that when I think of a practical application, you know, so you're not gonna, not gonna tow a Winnebago full-size trailer with a cross track, but you might want to tow a teardrop trailer. And a teardrop can weigh 1,000, 1,500 pounds. In a regular cross track, that has you right at the limit. There's no headroom. But in the cross track wilderness, you've got plenty of headroom. You don't have to worry so much about overexerting the engine or putting too much stress on the transmission. So that's a great, great thing to have, particularly if you're going to use this for what it's intended to be used for. All right, now, if you couldn't tell based on the amount that the car is moving up and down and side to side, we have left 
the pavement and we are on one of Utah's many dusty trails. Not metaphorically speaking, this is literally a very, very dusty trail. Now, the first thing that I wanna point out is uh, I actually don't have my feet on the pedals at all because I'm using the hill descent control system that is standard on all cross tracks. You actually don't need to buy the wilderness trim to get this. Similarly, torque vectoring on all cross tracks. Now, if you do want a little bit of the extra detail that you get out of the wilderness trim, the first place to start is probably X mode. So we're gonna hit a few bumps here. X mode is a traction management system that makes sure that you have traction or you know, power going to the wheel with traction at all times. So you don't have one wheel that's spinning so much, you know, just making a hole in the, in the snow or the dirt. Uh, and on the wilderness trim level, X mode is equipped with a deep snow and mud function in addition to the regular dirt and snow function. Now, beyond the software, the wilderness trim also has some other mechanical upgrades that you won't find in other cross track models. First and foremost, we have the longer coil spring suspension and shocks with extended travel. Those both give it that uh, lifted ride height up to 9.3 inches, but they also add in a little extra wheel articulation and they make it a little more composed, actually a lot more composed when driving off road. Now add in there the 4.111111 uh, final drive ratio, and it has a little more grunt, particularly when you start heading uphill, it gets a little more wheel torque at uh, low speeds, and the X mode system can actually identify when the cross track wilderness is moving slowly uphill, and it'll automatically shift it down into the you know, simulated first gear effectively to make sure that you're getting as much power and acceleration as you can in that situation. So as we come around the corner here, I think we will, uh, ooh, this is a deep one. We will do a little play in off-road, make sure to take some good video shots for you, and then I will come back on screen and tell you a little bit more about the interior, the technology, and then we'll go into price. version of this car gets the same 11.6 inch vertically oriented touchscreen. It's similar to what you would find in a Subaru Outback, which is pretty impressive that you can get the same tech in a Crosstrek than you can get in a more expensive Outback. Now, there are some details here that I really like. I think it's really bright and colorful. Uh, it's pretty well laid out. They've done a nice job of keeping a few physical controls like tuning knobs and volume knobs. You've got climate control, physical buttons. Uh, that's all really helpful. And then of course, there are some static touchscreen icons, so they don't, they don't move. They always know how to hit them. So for instance, the auto stop start is right there. It's always gonna be right there. Auto vehicle hold, that's there. Uh, and then there's a dedicated home screen button. There are some things though that bug me a little bit. It is susceptible to glare and it can kind of get washed out, a little tougher to see in direct sunlight. And of course, because so much of it is touchscreen oriented, there are just some buttons, some features that you have to go digging for a little bit uh, you know, in the menus in order to get. I wanna hear what you have to say. Let us know in the comment section below. Do you like this tech? Do you also find that it is a little susceptible to glare, um, or do you just wish there were more physical buttons? Let us know in the comment section below. Hey, maybe you like it. Maybe I'm the one who's picking nits. Inside, the Wilderness is actually pretty similar to other uh, Crosstrek's 
particularly the limited trim. So this sits just above the limited and you're gonna find a lot of the same thing. So we have StarTech synthetic leather seats. They're really easy to clean. They're mostly waterproof. And because this is the wilderness, we've got a little wilderness embossment here. We also have another bronze accent on the steering wheel. But otherwise, this is pretty standard Crosstrek. This is what you would expect. Another difference, I guess, is the headliner is dark in the wilderness trim. And that's actually kind of helpful because if you've ever been trying to wheel a mountain bike tire into your Subaru and you scuff the headliner, you know how hard that is to get off. So it's kind of nice that you won't really notice it with the dark headliner. Uh, we also have some contrast stitching here. Overall, things feel pretty good. There's a good amount of plastic in here, but being a subcompact crossover and one that's so you know, dedicated to an outdoorsy lifestyle, the plastic is to be expected. I guess it is a little more prevalent than I would like to see. Steering wheel is good. It's got, uh, it's not super thick, but it has nice grip to it, it's ergonomically designed. Again, we've got a little more of that contrast stitching and the button layout is really clear, really easy to understand. You've got your, you know, um, like audio and phone controls over here, a source button. You've got this toggle switch that controls the display on the, uh, the driver information display up there. And then on the right side, you've got all your adaptive cruise and your steering assist. You also have an S and an I button for the two uh, drive modes in the Crosstrek. Overall, I think the interior, it's pretty comfortable. The seats hold me in pretty well without feeling too claustrophobic. The back seat has about the same leg room and headroom that you had, not just in the other trims of the 24 Crosstrek, but actually the 23 and earlier, that second generation Crosstrek as well. There's not too much difference there. And the same goes for the cargo space. The last thing I'll mention on interior is there is a $2,270 option package available for the wilderness trim. It adds a 10 way power adjustable driver seat. That's a Harman Kardon stereo. And it adds this sunroof. It's a little too hot to have that open though. The 2024 Subaru Crosstrek starts at just over $26,000 for the base trim. Once you have factored in its $1,225 destination fee. But the Wilderness trim sits at the very top of the trim lineup, higher even than the Limited trim. And its price, $33,290 including destination, well, that makes this look particularly expensive for a Crosstrek. I mean, you can get some Foresters or even Outbacks for less than that amount. And you can make it even more expensive by adding that $2,270 uh, option package. However, this has true off-road ability, and if you were to look at some of its competitors, like the Jeep Compass Trailhawk or the Ford Bronco Sport Badlands, well, they're significantly more expensive. So in that regard, well, the Wilderness does offer true value, but I would caution against this vehicle unless you're going to use it for its intended purposes. Now, Subaru makes great versions of the truck Crosstrek with the two and a half liter engine that don't have things like the 4.1 final drive ratio. So for instance, a Ford, excuse me, a Subaru Crosstrek Sport or a Limited, it might get you where you need to go. It'll certainly get you further off the beaten path than many other subcompact crossovers. But if you need something that'll go further than that, well then the Crosstrek Wilderness is hard to ignore. And Although its price can look a little daunting in the subcompact space, there's actually a lot of value here. Thank you so much for watching. As a reminder, these are on sale and you can find a great deal on CarGurus. Please be sure to subscribe to the CarGurus YouTube channel and we'll see you next time.